Let's take a closer look at our assembly. Uh, you'll see that there are several pipe spools in this design already. We're actually going to be adding one of those and show you how we create those inside of SOLIDWORKS. Also, you'll notice that there are some tubing components as well, and you may also notice that we have some large weld mitts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a different display state. Display states really allow me to remove unwanted clutter from the screen, allow me to focus on my design. Let's get started creating our first pipe spool. To do this, we access the design library. Here we have many components that are stored. You notice that you have a couple flanges that we want to be able to use. To access those, we simply drag them and drop them into SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS smart mates that into position. All we need to do is choose which size. You'll notice that information that gets stored with this pipe flange is information about the pipe, also information about the elbows that are to be used in this pipe spool. This takes me immediately into the 3D sketch environment. Here I'm able to draw in any direction. And one of the things you'll notice that as I draw, SOLIDWORKS is automatically adding fillets in the corners. These fillets represent the elbows that are to be used, and SOLIDWORKS places the appropriate fillet dimension on there. It's connected up to our tank simply by adding another flange to our design. SOLIDWORKS starts that pipe, and then we'll connect the two pipes together. You can see SOLIDWORKS adds yet another fillet in that corner. And we may want to tidy up our design, so here we're just going to remove the pipe and weld directly to the flange. Now at this point, all we've done is dropped in a couple of flanges and drawn some lines. SOLIDWORKS has taken care of mapping all the pipe information onto that. You can actually see we've created a subassembly. The subassembly contains eight components, the two flanges, three pipes, and three elbows. So all this gets done automatically by SOLIDWORKS. Let's continue our design. Go back into our pipe route, and we're going to start to add some additional items. We're going to connect up to this port on the tank. Notice that this one is actually a three-inch diameter pipe, so we're going to need to choose a different size when we place our flange in. Here we'll choose the three inch pipe. Again, SOLIDWORKS knows that this is now a three inch pipe and it knows to associate the appropriate elbows for that. We want to connect this into our pipe route, so we'll simply add a point to do that. Here we're going to use the auto route capability. The auto route allows me to automatically do my pipe route. SOLIDWORKS also gives me an indication that we have conflicting properties for our pipe. It knows that we have a three inch and a four inch, and we'll deal with that in a little bit here. You can see that we can ch change the various paths that we have. In this case, we've cho chosen a different path than the one that was originally presented, and then we can actually move that around in our design. We can even add dimensions. Here I'm just going to add a dimension to keep it, say, 5 inches away from the outside of our enclosure there. So once we have that done, you can see that we can still move our pipe route around at this point. We can continue to add more dimensions to locate this. But we're going to need to connect that 3-inch pipe into our 4-inch pipe, and to do that, we'll use a reducing T. Notice that SOLIDWORKS here chooses the appropriate 4x4x3 four by four by configuration. All we need to do is choose which schedule we want to use. If we want to add in a valve, it's again simply simple as adding in yet another point to attach it to, then drag and drop, SOLIDWORKS will place that valve in there. Now one of the great things that SOLIDWORKS is doing behind the scenes is it's actually splitting the pipes. SOLIDWORKS knows where to split each of the individual pipes, say where it intersects with the T or with the flanges for the ball valve. Let's take a closer look at our pipe spool. We're going to open it up in its own window. You can see that this is a sub-assembly that has many components. There's actually 20 components that we've added to this assembly uh, simply by dragging and dropping flanges and placing various components around. You can see here that we have individual parts that represent each of the individual pipes, whether they be 3 inch or 4 inch pipes. We may want to add in something else like a pressure gauge. In order to do that, we're going to need to have something to mount that to. Here we're just going to access a threadlet. Here you can see the different sizes that we have. We'll place that into our design. And SOLIDWORKS automatically smart mates that into position for me. One of the things you'll notice with this threadlet is we're going to need to have a hole in our pipe to do that. And SOLIDWORKS provides a great capability, in this case, smart features. Smart features allow me to store features inside of components so that those features can quickly be added to other parts. Here we've added the smart feature for the threadlet. Simply by hiding that, you can quickly see that it's now added the hole that needs to be cut at the appropriate size into the pipe. We want to add in our pressure gauge, so we'll simply smart mate that into position as well. You can see how quick and easy it is for us to be able to do that.